How's well, the it was a it was a good stretch for us. Um, we talked about nine days, three wins, and the guys were able to do that, and and they got two good days off, and. Uh, coaches got to hit the road for some recruiting, in particular me, because uh, I don't get out much when we're in season. So uh, I don't know if coaches got rest, but players got some rest, and we've had a couple days, two or three days of really good practices, and we got two more before we hit the road. Um, very difficult stretch. This is, I think, we're one of about three teams that have our first seven games, five of them are on the road. So you either can make hay and, and put yourself in a good situation because you know that later on in February, those five, seven games, five of them are going to be at home. And so this is a pivotal road game, road trip for us, and we're playing two contrasting styles in Oregon State and Oregon, so it's going to be a big week. How's the uh, health of the team at this point? Uh, beat up a little bit, which is kind of surprising, you know, because we didn't, we didn't see any of that um, after the USC game. But, uh, you know, obviously Tony uh, is still battling some back spasms, so... Uh, he's kind of day to day, and we're working to see you know what's going to happen there. But uh, I think other than Tony, everybody seems to be pretty good. With the back spasms, is that similar to what he's kind of experienced throughout his career, or is it something that's a little different? You know, I, I don't know. He hasn't had much since I've been here uh, with him. He hasn't had any really serious back problems at all since I've been here with him. So his freshman year, if he did, um, I, I wasn't here at that time. Last year, he didn't really have much. Um, he, he never set out practice, never missed a game. So. Uh, we just got to see, but you know, at 6'9", 255, 260, um, you know, back spasm can be problematic. So we just wanted to, uh, to get it calmed down before we get him back in there. Did that flare up during the game? No, I had no issues or? during the game. Yeah. Uh, actually, it was just over the weekend. Um, it was over the weekend when it flared up. So it was two days off were great. And then we got back together over the weekend uh, and really only doing individual work. So it was non-contact stuff and uh, it flared up at that time. Are you anticipating him being able to practice today or tomorrow? Uh, I don't know. I've not seen uh, anybody today. So he was day to day yesterday, and I'm sure he's going to be day to day tomorrow, and today and tomorrow. Uh, he'll probably be day to day, and it'll probably be a game game time decision on that. Oregon State is 10 and 0 at home. All right. What do they do so well on that court? Well, they really defend you. So here we are again in this tough stretch of really going against a lot of good defensive teams. You know, you you look at Alabama, you look at Kentucky, Gonzaga. Utah, uh, Colorado, this has just been a really demanding stretch from really good defensive teams. And here comes another one. Um, they're easy, uh, right now I think they're ranked number one defensively in our league. Uh, and that's part of the reason why they've had a lot of success. They're going to throw a lot of zone at us, some pressing. Um, so you've got to make some shots and you've got to take good shots and find ways of getting it inside. But they've been really good at home. Uh, already gotten a win over Arizona at home. So this is a really good basketball team, especially in their building. Uh, and then two days later, uh, not even 48 hours, you're getting a team in Oregon who wants it to be as fast as possible. Uh, so we're going to get contrasting styles in both games. They seem to have kind of surpassed expectations this year. What is it that Coach Tinkle has done just in this these you know 18 uh, games? I've only that's hard because I've only coached against him once when I was in New Mexico in the NCAA tournament, and he was a hard out then. Uh, I think he does a good job of controlling the game offensively and defensively. It's not going to be a an up tempo style. It's going to be very controlled. Uh, they want to you. They want you to run clock on offense, and then they're going to run clock on offense. So you don't have as many possessions in the game. Uh, so it's a much more <coughs> controlling different type of style and he does a he does a really good job with it and they've gotten out of the gate very well with that style and with tony potentially hurting is that where you kind of need thomas to to step up and, and have a big yeah game? you know regardless you know thomas's development's got to continue and we saw that against usc I, I thought you know it was his best game out of the three in this three game package and we've been seeing it thomas is getting better and better and you know, if that's the case, you know, if somebody is down, and it's not just Thomas, it's everybody that's got to uh, pick up slack. If all of a sudden minutes are down for a certain individual, um, the next guy in's got to be able to play. And that's what you end up happening in January and February. We were very fortunate last year where we didn't get any injuries. And, you know, so if all of a sudden we've got one, we've got to be able to handle it and deal with it. Is this a little bit more difficult of a next guy up situation, given that you guys don't really have the depth that you might have had last well, year? Well, yeah, and not so much depth, it's just the youth. You know, the, the, the depth last year was Zach, who was a lottery pick, Bright, both Zach and Bryce being all freshmen uh, in the Pac-12, and Tony, who was only a sophomore, and yet I felt like those three had a lot more experience to them. Um, we don't have a lot of experience on this bench, so they're all learning as they go here. Um, and we had a lot more, I think, maturity even in the starting lineup last year to help that bench. So. 
uh, you know, everybody's kind of growing at the same time, and just we just want to see that growth continue. And we're seeing it in, in our entire bench from from Tom to Gigi. Gigi's had a great stretch. Noah's doing the things we need for him to do as far as being a big guard that really works. Um, you know, I thought he was terrific in the Cal game. Uh, those are the things that we got to see that bench continue to develop. How much can you see the confidence of Gigi start to grow? When he's, on the court. Uh, he's got great confidence everywhere except the free throw line. You know, his confidence <laughs> is great. You know, I've told him I just I said the next free throw, just step back and shoot a three point shot. So, <laughs> um, but you know, he's so fun to coach. He he's got. We knew he had a great basketball skill when he got here. That's what we liked about him. His skill set was unbelievable. He can finish right, left handed. He understands ball fakes, both from shooting and passing. He plays under control. He's going to be a really good stretch four down the road because you're seeing it already how he can shoot the the three ball. But he will develop into a dribble drive guy as well. Great passing big man. And we use a lot of our offense changes a little bit when he comes in. And we run through him a lot just because he can really pass the ball. So. He's getting bigger and stronger. Uh, Wes has done a great job with him over the summer. So as the years go by, he's going to continue to get better and better. I know when you first saw him, I don't think you guys were there to see him, right? Uh, you just saw him on watching another guy, that was right? Uh, no, we actually went in We went in to see him okay. and then obviously saw Prince at the okay. same time. Yeah. But uh, So that's ironic that all of a sudden then Prince decommits and we get a chance to get two from that same high school. Mm -hmm. But no, we went down to Sagemont to, to see him because we know the coach well and he told us about him, uh, just about an incredible skill set. He was just, he was about a buck 95. Um, so, and that's what Gigi has done a really good job of. He's like 205, 210 now. So I think as we sit here next year, you know, hopefully we got somebody that's 220 and he just continues to work on his strength and his body will continue to mature because his skill set's tremendous. How much more comfortable have you seen him get just with the team and all that? Obviously he hasn't been you know, in the U.S. for very long. No, he, you know what? He's been tremendous. I've told, his, I've told Coach Ross, the high school coach, the same thing. He's, he's, he and Tony rival being, you know, the clowns and the jokers on the team. I mean, which you wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought of that in the recruiting process because he was very quiet. Mm -hmm. uh, but the guys would tell you it's hard to get, it's hard to get Gigi to be quiet. I mean, he's a very outgoing personality, and, and this team needs that. I don't say that negatively. The team needs it. He's, he's fun to coach. He's, uh, he's a happy guy, you know, he's got a good demeanor to him and, you know, I, I like to kid him a little bit just because of the free throw line. If we need for him at least become a 10% foul shooter. So we're just looking for a little bit of growth at the free throw line. <laughs> Have you, guys, have you guys gotten any update on Jonah at all in terms of... We're waiting. Uh, hopefully we get some news here very quickly. Uh, he's done everything he was supposed to do, and uh, we're hopeful that thing, we're going to get good news here anytime. But we're really waiting on the NCAA to, to be able to see everything, and hopefully he'll be cleared for practice. Mm -hmm. Cool. All right. Thanks, Thank you.